Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our first Wednesday evening Lent Real Revival message. Tonight and next week, we will look at Real Revival means developing your friendship with God. Real Revival means developing your friendship with God. And that is what a lot of the journey into the wilderness is all about. Letting go of everything that, that is not helping our relationship with God. It's, it's been stripped down to the very <coughs> basics, <coughs> the, the very core of who we are, wrestling with all of those temptations so that the end result is to be able to know that it is only in our friendship with God that we actually have anything worth having. And so that is our journey for this week and this week. Real revival through developing our friendship with God as we walk with Him through the wilderness. Today our scripture comes from James's a book of James, chapter 4, verse 8. And it's a beautiful line that says, Draw close to God, and God will draw close to you. Draw close to God, and God will draw close to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, tonight as we journey with you into the wilderness of our own lives, our own situations, our own desolate feelings, destroyed moments. May we, we discover in that hard and cold and desolate place that the only thing that, that we can hold on to so as to find revival in those moments so as to find the path out is in fact our friendship with you, Lord. That loving, gracious, personal, but also so powerful relationship with you. Lord, may our friendship with you become the number one focus of our lives. We pray this. In the name of our friend Jesus Christ. Amen. truth is, you are as close to God as you choose to be. You are as close to God as you choose to be. Like any friendship, you must work, you must work at developing this friendship with God. It won't happen by accident. It takes desire, time, and energy. If you want a deeper, more intimate connection with God, you must learn to be, you must learn to honestly share your feelings with Him. Trust Him when He asks you to do something. 
learn to care about what he cares about and desire his friendship more than anything else. We start off learning how to develop our relationship with God by saying we must choose to be honest with God. We must choose to be honest with God. The first building block of a deeper friendship with God is complete honesty about your faults and your feelings. God doesn't expect you to be perfect but he does insist on complete honesty. None of God's friends in the Bible were perfect. If perfection was a requirement for friendship with God, we would never be able to be his friends. Fortunately, because of God's grace, Jesus is still the friend of sinners. Let me say that again. Because of God's grace, Jesus is still and always will be the friend of sinners. In the Bible, the friends of God were honest about their feelings, often complaining, second-guessing, accusing, and even arguing with their Creator. God, however, didn't seem to be bothered by this frankness. In fact, He encouraged it. God allowed Abraham to question and challenge him over the destruction of the city of Sodom. Abraham pestered God over what it would take to spare the city, negotiating God down from 50 righteous people to only 10. God also listened patiently to David's many accusations of unfairness, betrayal and abandonment. God did not slay Jeremiah when he claimed that God had tricked him. Job was allowed to vent his bitterness during his ordeal. And in the end, God defended Job for being honest and he rebu rebuked Job's friends for being inauthentic. Paraphrasing a little bit, God told them, you haven't been honest either with me or about me, not the way my friend Job has. My friend Job will now pray for you, and I will accept his prayers. In one startling example of frank friendship, God honestly expressed his total disgust with Israel's disobedience. He told Moses he would keep his promise to give the Israelites the promised land, but he wasn't going one step further with them into the desert. God was fed up and he let Moses know exactly how he felt. Moses speaking as a friend of God responded with equal or equal candor. Moses essentially said, look, you tell me to lead this people, but you don't let me know whom you are going to send me with. If I'm so special to you, let me in on your plans. Don't forget, this is your people, your responsibility. If your present doesn't take the lead here, then call this trip off right now. How else will I know that you are with me in this, with me and your people? Are you traveling with us or not? You can only be a friend of God to be able to say something like that to him. God then as a friend to Moses said, All right, just as you say, this also I will do. For I know you well and you are special to me. You see how that engagement, that honest engagement between Moses and, and God brought about a, a positive, wonderful outcome. You know, God can handle that kind of frankness, that, that intense honesty from you. 
Absolutely he can. Genuine friendship is built on discourse, on disclosure, on loving sharing. You know, what may appear as audacity to God, what may appear as audacity, in fact, God views as authenticity. God listens to the passionate words of his friends. He's bored with predictable, pious cliches. To be God's friend, you must be honest to God, sharing your true feeling, not what you think you ought to feel or say. It is likely that if you really want to become a friend with God, you'll need to confess some hidden anger. Not just anger, but also resentment that you might hold at God for certain areas of your life where you have felt cheated or disappointed. You see, until we mature enough to understand that God uses everything for good in our lives, we will harbor resentment towards God, whether it be over our appearance, our background, unanswered prayers, past hurts, and other things we would change if we were God. People often blame God for hurts caused by others. This creates what William um, Becker's call says is your hidden rift with God. Your hidden rift with God. Bitterness is the greatest barrier to friendship with God. You know, we often ask, why would I want to be God's friend if he allowed this? That's a resulting question that comes out of our anger and bitterness and resentment to him at times. The antidote, of course, is to realize that God always acts in your best interest, even when it is painful and you don't understand it. But releasing your resentment and revealing your feeling is the first step to healing. As so many people in the Bible did, tell God, tell God exactly how you feel. And God wants that. In fact, to instruct us in candid honesty with him, God gave us the book of Psalms, a worship manual that is full of ranting, raving, doubts, fears, resentments, and deep passions combined with thanksgiving, praise, and statements of faith. You see, God says he wants us to share every motion with him because in Psalms, Every possible emotion is catalogued in those words. When you read the emotional confessions of David and others, realize this is how God wants you to worship him, holding back nothing of what you feel. You know, it would be wonderful to be able to pray like David, where David said, I pour out my complaints before him and tell him all my troubles, for I am overwhelmed. You know, it should be encouraging to know that all of God's closest friends, Moses, David, Abraham, Job, and others, all had bouts with doubt. They all struggled to sometimes understand what God was up to. But instead of masking their misgivings with pious cliches, they candidly voiced them openly and publicly. Expressing doubt is sometimes the first step towards the next level of intimacy with God.
second way we need to develop our relationship with God, our friendship with God, is that we must choose to value what God values. See, this is what friends do. They care about what is important to the other person. The more you become God's friend, the more you will care about the things he cares about grieve over the things he grieves over and rejoice over the things that bring pleasure to him. Paul, for me, is the best example of this. God's agenda was his agenda. God's passion was his. He wrote, The thing that has me so upset is that I care about you so much. This is the passion of God burning inside of me. The other friend of God, David, felt the same way. He said, passion for your house burns within me. So those who insult you are also insulting me. And so what does God, your friend, care about most? Well, number one is the redemption of his people. He wants all his lost children found. That's the whole reason Jesus came to earth. The dearest thing to the heart of God is the death of his son for his friends. The second dearest thing is when his children share that good news with others. Share the fact that God is passionate about them. To be a friend of God, you must care about all the people around you whom God cares about. Care about the things of mercy and justice and righteousness. You see, friends of God tell their friends about God, but friends of God also live lives of mercy, justice, righteousness. And so our closing question tonight is simply this. What practical choices will you make today, will you make this week, in order to grow closer to God? What practical choices will you make today or will you make this week to develop your friendship with God? Will you love what he loves? Will you love what he loves? And will you choose? Will you choose to move closer to him? By being more and more honest with him. Let us close in prayer. Dear God, we give you thanks that you have always been honest and truthful with us. You've always told us that you love us beyond measure. But you've also told us that it pains you to the depth of your divine heart 
every time we reject that love, every time we try to limit that love, every time we misuse that love. So Lord, please teach each of us tonight and going forward in this journey of Lent to let go of everything that hinders our ability to to take hold of your love, to take hold of you in the moments that we find ourselves, not just in the wilderness, but every moment. But Lord, if it be your will that we need to find ourselves in a moment of wilderness, because that is the place where we are able to truly awaken to the truth that it's your friendship we need the most, then so be it. But then, Lord, as our friend, guide us through the wilderness, towards the cross, but most of all beyond the cross, so that we may live in peace, hope, joy, and love with you as our friend, now and forever. This we pray. Amen. And so I look forward to continuing our journey next week of developing our friendship with Jesus, with God, so as to discover real revival as we continue through the season of Lent, knowing that that the more we let go of everything that pulls us away from God, then we will be able to move deeper, deeper, and deeper into his love. Be blessed, be safe, and I will see you soon. Amen.